Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? I got the intro right this time. Get too tired. End up messing up the intro. So we're on Psalm 77 today. The consoling memory of God's redemptive works to the chief musician. Um, before we start, I have a word. I was just praying with Jennifer this morning, and I'm going to tell you guys something. We all go through something. Not everybody has health issues. Not everybody has financial issues. Not everybody has, you know, problems where they live. We've all got different problems. In, in the Christian community, our problems run the gambit, just like it does in the unbelieving community. I want you guys to remember something, because it gets hard, and you get weak. <clears throat> But there's one thought you have to keep in your mind when you're going through these things. The Lord blesses the just and the unjust. Scripture says that. The Lord also tests the just and the unjust. That's, that's not directly said in the Bible, but it's in there. Actually, a bunch of times. There are example after example after example of God testing people, of God inflicting people to test their faith or to even strengthen them more. And there's also examples and there's direct statements, especially mainly in the New Testament, where God inflicts something onto his children so that he can show more grace to them or he allows a situation to get really bad so that he can show more of his grace so that he can prove himself more there's times where we suffer he'll he'll make us suffer so and, and this is a kind of a foreign concept to some christians he'll make us suffer so we'll get stronger and he'll keep training us and teaching us on how to deal with those things to build us up until the day where he can inflict us and we show his grace and his power and his works come through us. And he showers us with blessings. So when we're going through bad things, and you've heard me say this before, just because we see it bad doesn't mean it's bad. Um, it, it's You have to look and examine why you're going through these things. What what is the What are these things a direct result of? You know, what, why do I have the problems that I have? And look and see what it is. So when you go into prayer, you have a much more productive prayer. I don't pray for healing from my pains and stuff anymore. I can't sleep at night because my the the nerve that goes down uh, it's behind your funny bone, your humerus. That nerve swells up at night, and when I lay on my stomach or on my side, it pushes on that, and my arm goes to sleep, to not to tingle, to pain, from my elbow down, both arms, every night. I can't even lay my hands on my chest because it, it, it squishes that nerve so bad, and I, I wake up, so I don't, I don't hardly ever sleep. It's all painful all the time. I can't walk right. It's all painful. I went into Walmart yesterday, had to go all the way to the back of the store to get some sour cream and some shredded cheese. And it was limping all the way there, all the way back. It's it's always, no matter what I do, there's pain. And I used to pray for healing. But then I started to think about it. But why am I like this? And I saw actions by myself that put me there. And I also saw actions by God that put me there. When we go through these things, it's meant to tell us, trust in me. It's him speaking to us. Trust in me. Believe in me. Walk with me. Though you may walk in pain, the day is coming when I will heal you. And your glory will be grand. I'm showing someone else through your pain to trust in you. Because he'll do that. Sometimes you'll go through things so other people can see it happen. It happened to Job. Not only was Job tested, but so were his three friends. And what did they do? Ridiculed him. What did God tell him when he got there? <laughs> you three get up and get out of here. I don't know who you think you are. 
He also allowed that stuff to happen to Job because it, what it showed Job, and you remember in the beginning of Job, he said he used to give extra sacrifice because he thought maybe his sons and daughters were doing something they shouldn't be doing because they like to go and drink and live it up, have fun together. you know. And it was behind closed doors. And he kind of thought, well, well, there might be something going on. I, I, hope it's, I hope there's nothing going on like that. So he did extra sacrifice for them. There's, the implication is there that they were messing around and it was sexual immorality. What happened? When Cain blew the house down, killed, killed all of them. That could have been a judgment. Then go look at what happened with his wife. When things got really bad and they lost everything and Job was sick, what did his wife say? Wife never got sick. She never got hurt. What happened? Just curse God and die. She didn't love him. Evidently, she didn't love him at all, otherwise she'd have been sitting right next to him. So, was what happened to Job actually a bad thing? Or did it actually turn out to be a pretty good thing? Because his kids, if his kids, I mean, evidently Job had an idea in his head that his kids were doing something they shouldn't have been doing, or he wouldn't offer enough extra sacrifice for them. God took them out. Job, I'm going to take that out of your life. I don't want you to have to put up with that. Then when it got real bad... Look what his wife did. Job, your wife isn't a good woman. I'm taking her away from you. I'm driving her away because she doesn't love you. And then he sits down and here come his friends. People he trusted. And all three of them sit there and take turns taking shots at him. God comes up and says, all right, Job, that's enough of this. Get up. Get up, put your big boy pants on, pull up your boots. Let's have a talk. You three, beat it. You're not his friends, and he don't need friends like you. Get out of here. So he took his friends out of his life. He said, Job, you need me. And I and you weathered this storm. Because it was the ability for... All that stuff ended up happening. See, God knew what he was doing when Satan asked to go and, and, and inflict him. God knew what he was doing. And he said, I'm, I've taken all the negative out of your life, and now I'm going to bless you double what you had. Because now you're going to have a real good life. You thought your life was good before, it's so real good now. You stood in faith. And we got all the bad stuff, all the negative out of your life. So here we go. And he did. He doubled him extra. Doubled him up. So all the stuff that people keep going on about, about, um, oh, I can't believe God's doing this to me. I can't believe God's doing that to me. Or all this stuff about, uh, I can't get healed. Why won't he heal me? And, and stuff like that. It's like, well, and when I counsel people on that kind of stuff, I tell them, well, there's probably a pretty good reason why you're going through what you're going through. The people around you, first of all, are watching you go through this. And it's a message sent to them. How you endure those things shows them God's mercy and grace. And there may be people in your life that need, a call out. And so he's testing them through your in infliction. He may be trying to get people out of your life or to show you the truth about them, whether they really care for you or not. And then he's strengthening you. He's building you up. He's strengthening your faith. He's teaching you to trust in him no matter what you see, no matter what you go through. You think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were walking without faith? You think they were scared whenever they were they built that fire in that furnace? See, they, they had kilns back then so they could, you know, make pottery and stuff like that, fire pottery. They had ovens they'd cook, you know, massive amounts of food and stuff like that in. This oven was so hot that the the guards burned up. It, is, it didn't say they burned, it said they burned up. I'm, I'm thinking it, it burnt them to nothing. Because it was so hot. Seven times the normal heat. So you could say that's anywhere between 4,000 and 7,000 degrees. That's hot. And they chucked them in there. Nothing happened. And when they took them out, clothes didn't even smell like smoke. They stood in faith. What, what happened? They were tested. You saw what happened. You guys need to bow down to the statue and worship. But that's not our God. Our God is above. Or we cannot bow. All right, you're going to get put to death. And they didn't, they held the line. They didn't give in. The people around them witnessed it. How many, how many of them do you think believed in God after that? <laughs> after what they saw? 
Just because we pass through the fire, it doesn't mean that we did something wrong. Just because we go through things in our lives doesn't mean that he's cursing us. It's very possible he's using us to talk to others. He wants people to see us stand no matter what. Because there could be somebody out there watching and go, wow. They, 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 there is, God is working in their lives. Look at what they're going through and look how strong they are. Look at their faith. So when you're going through stuff, keep that in mind. And, and talk to him about that stuff. Ask him, Lord, if you're using me in my afflictions, show me. Show me so I can walk more closely with you and trust in you. And so that way, whoever's watching that needs to see this will gain faith from this. Help me to walk better with you even though I'm sick. Guys, you, you know how it is. There's times I haven't done evening prayer because it just felt so bad in the afternoons. And there's time, a lot of times where I'm like, ah, oh, I'm, too, I'm too tired. I'm not going to do it. And I end up doing it. And I'm getting now where even when I'm feeling sick, uh, I'm pushing through it and getting up here and doing this. Because I'm starting to learn why I'm going through what I'm going through. Stick to faith. Stay strong. Stay focused. Keep your eyes on him. Because if you're looking at your health issues or you're looking at your troubles and, and the things that you're going through, that's what you're focused on. That's what Satan wants. But if you're looking up at him and you're staying focused on him, when those things are going on, it changes. You know, when I'm doing a video or even I'm doing a, a prayer video, and um, I don't know if anybody realizes this or not, when I'm doing it, and while I'm, especially if the Holy Spirit is pushing me, I don't feel any more pain. And I've only just started to notice that. Anything else I'm doing, I feel pain. But when I'm doing that, I don't feel pain. I'm aware that there's there's pain, but I, I don't feel it. I'm focused on the message. The Spirit's got me focused on it. And that's what he's trying to push us to do. When we're in that stuff, get into the Word. Stay focused on the Word. Stay focused on Him. Don't worry about those things. This is just something we... Look, we're living in a world, literally living in a world that we don't belong in. You know, if you take somebody from, say, well, what, for example, when I went to Iraq and uh, we had to go down to the processing center, uh, the SRC, and we had to get shots. They're like, you guys can't go to a foreign country you've never been to before on the other side of the earth where they don't have... Sorry about that. They don't have clean water. Uh, they don't have clean anything. And uh, just walk right in like everything's fine. And we got anthrax vaccinations because there's anthrax over there in the, in the, in the dirt. I had blood running down both arms because I got so many shots. Now, if I didn't get those shots and took off and went over there, say I hopped a ship or something and went over there, I'd die. Because that's not my native land. I can't live there. This earth is not our native land. We can't live here. We're going to die because we don't belong here. We belong in heaven. So the moment we got saved, this earth became alien to us. The moment we were born again, we became a citizen of heaven. And we now don't belong here. We're not inoculated against all this. The sin that's, that this here is killing us. It's destroying our flesh. Now, you know people, and I know people, that they're living, the, they're living it up. They're having a good old time. And they're healthy and they're strong and everything's going good for them. And, and they're just, they're doing great. I got, a, I got a buddy that's like that. But when you dig into, really dig into the issues, you find out there's actually a lot of problems going on. But I, I have a bunch of people that life is good, that everything's fine. Why aren't they suffering? Especially when they're living in the same place I'm living. Why aren't they suffering? Kind of makes you wonder if it's punishment or if God is trying to reach them. See, they're citizens of earth. So this earth, the earth doesn't attack them. They belong here. So they don't suffer as much. Nowhere near as much. 
We don't belong here, guys. This is foreign land to us. And anyone, any person on this earth right now that goes to a foreign land they've never been to, they get sick. They're going to get sick. You have to have shots before you go to any other country. It's just the way it is. Whenever we went to, um, and this is just, this is just in America, when I went to basic training. And if you've been to multiple states, it, it's, it helps, but you go to a uh, basic training and you get what they call the PIV, the private infectious virus. And it's people from other parts of the country and they all come together in one place living in close quarters and proximity. And all the little bugs that are in different parts of just of our country come together and make this super sickness. Everybody gets the sniffles, everybody gets stuffed up runny nose, you know, everybody gets diarrhea. And it's because of all these different bugs from different states, different parts of the country. This earth is not our home. We don't belong here. So consequently, we're suffering because of what's here. And we're just waiting for that time when we go to heaven. So in the, in the afflictions that you're going through, don't let them get you down. First of all, know where this stuff comes from. Satan likes to use these things to influence you. Second, God will test us. What do he say to Abraham? Abraham, I'm going to bless you. All nations will come from your seed. Of my, call, my, call people by my name. And then the very next chapter, very first thing he says, and God decided to test Abraham. He tests us. He tested Paul. Paul prayed three times. Lord, can you take this away? He said, my grace is sufficient. Don't worry about it. Paul had issues. Timothy had issues. A bunch, bunch of the guys had issues. So being a Christian, it doesn't mean you're going to get a healing. Just because you pray, it doesn't mean you're going to get a healing. Just because you pray a thousand times, it doesn't mean you're going to get a healing. It doesn't mean you're going to get deliverance from issues. If you pray and nothing changes, maybe there's it, it's time to pray for something a little different. Maybe it's time to take another look at it, at it and find it, see if you can find out what's actually going on. Because it's very possible that this is something that he's using. To be able to use you and eventually be able to show more grace and blessings to you. So God can show more of his goodness. I know that because of the issues that I have. Um, I've tried to find jobs, can't find a job. They don't want me because of the health issues that I have. It's hard. I can't stand for long periods of time, can't sit for long periods of time, can't walk for long periods of time, can't carry nothing. It's terrible. And I've always been a, a laborer, always. But he wanted, he got me doing this here. So if I was still healthy, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be out doing stuff outside. Well, he's got me inside. I'm allergic to the sunlight and I need vitamin D because my body won't hold it. What, what kind of contradiction can you get there? They tell me you need to go out in the sun, but I'm allergic to the sun. If it, however long it takes one of y'all to get a sunburn, it takes me like a third of that time to get a sunburn. I have to wear long sleeves in the summer. And even then sometimes I get a little bit of a burn. So... I can't be outside in that stuff, but I'm supposed to be outside to soak up the sun. It's weird. I take supplements nonstop because my body can't hold it. He wanted me in here to do these videos. He wanted me available. He knew that I would, I would, if I could get outside, I'd be outside all day. So I'm going to make him so he has to stay here. That way he can do this. I know that. I realized that because I, I reasoned it out. He was taking my pride away from me. I was very prideful. He knocked it out of me. I know these things because I sat down and I reasoned now. Okay, if you're not going to heal me, why do I have this and what is it What is it meant to teach me? And is it teaching other people things? And I found out it's teaching me and it's teaching other people. And it puts me in a position to do what I'm doing. So the spirit, I'm weaker so the spirit can work through me stronger. So think about that on your issues because it's very possible that that could be happening with you. I know a lot of you guys got health issues. I'm right there with you. And it very well could be that what you're going through is meant to test your faith 
and to strengthen it. And what you're going through is meant to instill in you a much stronger sense of running to him and leaning on him. Relying on him. And it could be teaching somebody something that's around you. Somebody who's maybe weaker in faith and is struggling. Your strength will strengthen them. Seeing you in your suffering state may strengthen them. So take the time to get into prayer and to, to look at, at those things and see if maybe that's the case. Because if he's going to heal you, he's going to heal you. Boom, it happens. I've seen it happen. But it may not be his will to heal you. It may be his will for you to learn something and for somebody watching you to learn something and to put you in a position, unique position, for you to do a special ministry. None of this stuff is by accident. There's always a reason for it. Okay. That, that was for everybody because I had that put on my heart this morning and... I know it was long, but we, we, when we suffer, that's one of the biggest tools that Satan uses to get us down is when we suffer. And it's, it's not, it, we got to take his tools away from him. So he can't inflict on us anymore. And now I don't worry about my pain. I go take whatever pills. The pills are even inconsequential. Take them, move on with my life. And I go and I do what I got to do no matter what the pain is. I just, I don't focus on it anymore. I focus on the Lord. And he leads me into whatever I need to do. And it's, it's good. And I know there's a better day coming anyway. So I'm looking forward to that better day because, partly because of this. So we're on the sevens. Now that I've had that big old long commentary. Hopefully, hopefully that was a benefit to somebody. Um, we're in the sevens. And we're in Psalm 77, two sevens. So this ought to be good. It's titled The Consoling Memory of God's Redemptive Works. So let's get right into prayer since I used up a bunch of prayer time for edification. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up as our God and to worship you as our God, our creator, our father in heaven, the great king of the universe. Father, we give thanks for your word. We give thanks for your Lord, our Lord, your son, Jesus Christ. We give thanks for all the little blessings we forget to give thanks about. Last night we had such an amazing meal and we don't eat like that very, very rarely. But it was my son's birthday, so we made a nice meal. And it's so enjoyable to, to sit and have a really good meal and, and talk with family and have some quiet time. Some, and the, the happy moments are kind of rare, yet they're not rare. But we thank you for those because it's a respite from all the troubles of the day. It's a respite from from the, the non-stop issues and the constant hating. And every now and then you give us a break and it's really nice. Father, we also thank you for our inflictions, afflictions and infirmities. We thank you for the things that we go through because we know they're meant to teach us something. We know they're meant to teach somebody watching us go through it something. We know they're meant to lead us somewhere. We see so many examples in your Bible of these things over and over and over again. All those people that were sick and that were having problems when Jesus was walking the earth were there so he could heal them. Each in a unique position to be healed, to prove who he was. That stuff that they were going through wasn't by accident. In fact, I think in one spot it even mentions that. I think it's the scripture that talks about, they were like, hey, who sinned that this guy is blind? Nobody sinned. He was made blind so I could prove myself. And then Jesus healed him. We, we go through things because there's a purpose behind all those things. And in your book of Job, <coughs> in your book of Job, we see that example. Job's kids most likely weren't doing something they should have been doing. You dealt with it. Job's wife didn't really care for him or love him. You dealt with it. Job's friends, you dealt with them. And then you dealt with Job more bountifully because he held the faith. 
Father, you show yourself in everything. Nothing happens by accident because you are aware of everything that's happening. You're watching it. You're controlling it. You're allowing it. You've put things in place. And people don't give you near the credit they should give you for you letting certain things happen, stopping certain things from happening, and directing the path of man. The Bible says in multiple places, you have set a path before us that we should walk in it. That means you're governing that path. That means whatever we go through and experience on that path, you put it there. Not as a negative, but to teach us. We're walking along that path, we come across a bunch of thorns and briars. We go through the first ones, and we're, we're clothes ripped, bloody, scratched up, and we're struggling and suffering and cursing because we went through all, this, all those thorns and briars. Walk along a little bit further, Find putrid water on the path. Walk through it. Feet get a skin infection. I remember now we're sore walking through it. Sore wet feet and, and scratches all over. And the and the and the water made the scratches hurt worse on our legs. Walking along the path, come across a, a storm, throwing blowing wind, blowing rocks, getting hit by rocks. Go along further on the path. We find those thorns again. But this time, we got a cloak. And this time, we got a stick. And we take that stick and we beat those thorns down. Lay the cloak over the top of them and walk over them. We come across that water again. We find a way around it or we throw rocks in there to make it shallower so we can walk across the rocks. Come across that wind. And we hide ourselves till it passes. All the things we go through on the path of life teach us, instill in us a, a, a different understanding, and strengthen us to deal with the next problem that comes. And you've shown me this, and it, it, everything that we go through makes sense. And you pour out more blessings when we stand in faith. And a lot of these things you allow to happen, and some of them you even do them, because it gives you the opportunity to show more grace, and to show more love, and to shed more love. And we've got to, as, as still living in a flesh body, we've got to get out of that carnal frame of mind, and start focusing on the spirit. And Lord, I pray that we focus more on the spiritual things, that we stop focusing on the flesh, because that's our biggest problem, we focus on the flesh. But Father, I thank you. For the problems in my life. I thank you for the health issues that I have. I thank you for the struggles. I thank you for the mocking and scoffings, even in my own home. The people, when I'm doing a video, walking through there belching and farting while I'm doing a video. And, and I've told them that it shows, it shows up. You can hear it. My wife walking in the room cussing. While I'm doing a video, knowing the time of day that it is, and I'm doing a video. I, I thank you for those things because those things, first of all, show how real this is. And second of all, it strengthens. I don't have any ill will towards them. I used to get angry, but I don't get angry anymore. Because I know what these things are meant to achieve. And now they're learning. And they're changing. I've seen changes in many people around me because... Of what's happening to me and what they're witnessing so father I thank you for those things because as if we get in the right frame of mind we see them for what they are and see the work that you're doing and using those for it helps it changes changes us it makes it easier for us to focus on you because these things now become inconsequential. We don't pay attention to them anymore. We don't focus on them. We focus on you and focus on your word. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you for building us up. Thank you for showing us the truth. I pray that you show every believer who's suffering what the purpose is behind their suffering. Because there's a purpose behind it. He showed me. I know that they'll benefit from it. Father, we're on the sevens on the Psalms. We're praying all the Psalms with sevens. And then we're going to see another message here, I think. Because we did the one with the twos and it was a great message. Now we're doing Psalm 77, double sevens. Oh, 
No, it's not Psalm 77. I messed up. No wonder the continuity was off. I'm sorry. We need to go to Psalm 70. Prayer for relief from adversaries. Now the continuity is right because the last one was about similar subject. I don't know what I was thinking. So we're on all the Psalms with seven. So now we're on the right Psalm. And I, I couldn't believe, couldn't figure out why uh, the continuity wasn't the same. And now, now we're back on track. So we're going to pray Psalm 70 today. Prayer for relief from adversaries. And if we go back and look at Psalm 67, an invocation and a doxology. And we go back again. Safety from enemies. So we're in the same, we're in the same continuity here of topics. So after that mistake, Lord, please forgive me for that. <laughs> Let me get back on track here and do the right way. Prayer for relief from adversary, Psalm 70. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded who seek my life. Let them be turned back and confused who desire my hurt. Let them be turned back because of their shame who say, aha, aha. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. And let those who love your salvation say continually, let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Let God be magnified. Indeed, we pray you are magnified. Salvation comes from you. <coughs> Truth comes from you. Absolutely, we want you to be magnified. We can't possibly do this without you. Now, with all that being said, and with the, the message I put at the beginning before prayer, understanding comes from all things. The unbeliever gains understanding by the life they live and the things they go through. The, the everyday person gains understanding after solving a problem, going to school, uh, working with somebody who has more experience. You know, understanding comes from everywhere, but the understanding that comes from your word is m very unique. It's much more specific, meant to achieve a particular purpose. And our understanding verses are out of Luke 18, and it's verses 9 through 14. And it's the story in the, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. And right away, th this is so many people that call themselves Christians today. And we see this, this is a group of people that think they're religious. Two men went up into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector... Now, notice... Notice... What kind of mindset he has. Now the tax collector. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Amazing understanding from this series of verses. And after this prayer, Father, I'm going to share the understanding that I see here. And your word never ceases to give understanding. From the very first sentence to the very last sentence, there's understanding. And we, we barely even scratch the surface of what's contained in your word. There's so much contained in here. In a thousand years, I couldn't go through and find everything that's in here. I love your word. I love you. We love you. We love your word. I, I still pray for that strong, uncontrollable desire for your word to be put in every believer's heart. And to read it, but not only read it, but hear it as they're reading it. To read it out loud. To hear your voice. Been a blessing to me. I know it'll be a blessing to everyone else. Father, we love you and we thank you. We bless you and we praise you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning prayer. We can't do this without God. 
We can't do this without Jesus Christ. This passage in Luke has a lot in it. If you go and look at the first section here, the Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, starting in verse 11. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. The problem is, we're all just like every other everyone else. You can't separate yourself because we're all the same. The only difference between us and, and the unbeliever is we believe. Extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. Now, when he said that statement, that made me think of probably almost all the church people that I've ever known. Including the recent ones. I tithe. I fast. I do this. I do that. But they don't realize, and they miss so many blessings out of those things. When they tithe, they tithe out of responsibility. He wants you to give freely and abundantly from your heart, from the love contained within you. Um, the fasting. It's not just about spirit, uh, physical fasting. It's about spiritual fasting. We actually have a, a, a study we're going to do on this here in the near future. There's a spiritual fasting that we can do. See, not everybody, their physical state can't handle a, a physical fasting. So we spiritually fast. There's so many ways to fast because the Bible never gives a specific way to fast. It shows you many examples of different kinds of fasting. David fasted for three weeks. He ate. Because I've had a lot of people come up, and, or not a lot, but a few, tell me, well, David fasted for three weeks. And... My longest fast lasted 10 days. But it's not about the physical fast. It's about what you're doing with that fast. People think, well, I'll, I'll quit eating. That'll make me more holy. No, <clears throat> that doesn't help you. It's what it's meant to achieve. It's what's going on inside of you. Where is your heart? Where is your mind? What are you doing during that time? Fasts are usually spent in prayer and in studying the word. Drawing you closer to God. You're putting the flesh into subjection. Weakening it. So your spirit stands out and focuses more on the Lord. Gets control over that flesh. David, David, he said he ate no pleasant food. So he ate probably boiled barley. And he ate um, fruits and vegetables. That's it. That's pretty pleasant food to me. So his fast was to abstain from something that he enjoyed. Now, a lot of people get, you know, the 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 Catholics like to do that with the Friday, you know, the Friday thing or the what was it? Not Ash Wednesday, but the other one. I can't remember what it is. Um they like to use that to make it out like they're doing something. I've had people tell me, "You are you, you know, fasting? No. Why not? Because I think it's a joke. What you guys give up doesn't mean anything. Because you do it just because everybody else does it. Would you give up? Oh, I, I don't watch this one TV show that I don't watch. Okay, that's great. Why? And none of them could ever tell me why. It was because everybody else did it. There's more meaning behind this stuff. If David ate during his fast, but he was fasting, what was he fasting? He was fasting spiritually. And that's something that we have to learn, is about spiritual fasting. is about what it really means to fast. And, like I said, not everybody can fast. Because their health will decline immensely, even just a matter of a few hours. Diabetics have to eat every certain time. So what do you do? He op opened the door for multiple types of fasting. Fasting is not an external activity. It's an internal activity. F physical fasting is great. Spiritual fasting is better. And he left the door open for all those things because he knows some of us aren't going to be able to do it physically. I've gotten to the point now where I get pretty nauseated. Like my medicine, I, I get sick and throw my medicine back up. Uh, if I don't eat something now. So is it con conducive for me to do a physical fast? Not really. Not unless I put certain guidelines on, on how I do it. 
So we go into physical fasting. We learn what the Bible says about this stuff, and that's what we do. And when I can do it, and actually I end up doing a physical fast anyway, the way I do things. Most of the time it's, most of the time it's one meal a day. And then he gives tithes. Oh, I already talked about that. He, he gives tithes of all that he has. But you go back and look at the, historically what they used to do, and they would go out there to the flowers and t pull ten petals off the flowers. Or ten leaves off a plant. They'd give all that stuff. So they were having to throw a lot of stuff away that people were tithing. It's like, that doesn't make sense. Tithe from your heart, not from your stuff. Because if you tithe from your heart, you'll automatically tithe from your stuff. No, it's not even about tithing. Just give. And be happy giving. But then we got this tax collector down here. He wouldn't even look up. I'm not worthy to look up. He was like, I'm not worthy for any of this. And yet he's collecting taxes. I'm not worthy of any of this. This just happened to be my job. I'm a sinner, Lord. Please, please be merciful to me. And who ended up being the more justified? The guy who was humbled. And pride is probably the biggest issue with, with Christians nowadays. Pride in stuff. Pride in, in themselves. Pride in how great they are. I know I had it. I had a lot of pride in my strength. I was am, still abnormally strong. And I had a lot of pride in it. I held it over people's head. I made fun of people doing it. And now it's gone. It's funny, it's gone, but I'm still stronger than most people around me. But I don't, I don't use it anymore. And I know that's why he took my strength away. To weaken me. And to humble me. So that I would lean more on him and not rely on myself. And see, now, looking back, it all makes sense. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Look at what you're going through and look at what you've been through. And think about what you've learned. Look at those things and think about, what is he trying to teach me? What is he trying to show me? And or is he trying to reach somebody watching me go through it? And these things will make so much more sense. And it makes them easier to endure. All right. I've talked long enough. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray this made sense. And I pray that you guys get it and realize it. That you're not suffering because God's mad at you or hates you. The suffering that you're going through has a purpose. Seek out that purpose. And you'll be blessed. See you guys in the next video.